Hey everybody, Max Monster here. Um, back with a short vid. Um, just going to be discussing farming options, uh, how things work that I perceived and uh, have been able to find and read and seems uh, actually right. Um, and primarily, you know, the person who wanted this wanted to know about how to farm splinters. So we get these Eternity Splinters in the game, and they drop at random now. They used to be on a game timer, and they may very well go back to a timer to guarantee a drop. But even when they were on a timer, they're always affected by Special Item Find. So what is Special Item Find? Special Item Find, as it describes, increases the chance to find costumes, heroes, and fortune cards cards. Bosses only drop special items the first time you defeat them each day. So we actually just found out a lot about special item find. First off, I, ha I have actually found a costume on the ground, so that does happen. I found heroes on the ground. That did happen. That still can happen according to the developers in special areas at special times so they could run special weekends or something where a hero will just drop instead of those splinters. Um, they left that open, and if that is the case, it's going to be based on special item find. Now, it won't be 100% affected by uh, special item find. So what that means is, even at 0%, people can get a special item. It's just not as going to be as often. It's going to be 10% less than someone who has 10% special item find. Um, it's really an in-depth algorithm they used to do this. So, say an Eternity Splinter has a drop rate of 1 in 1,000. And you get 10% special item find. That doesn't mean you now go to 1 in 100. It's just 10% faster than it was. So at 1 in 1,000, you're now looking at uh, probably 1 in 900, 1 in 950. It's a big, complex mathematical thing that they do, and it's just the way it works. Um, they do want to make these splinters almost guaranteed dropped. So it's not actually as bad as what I just said. I'm just using one in a thousand as an example. It's probably more like um, at zero special item find, probably one in 300 kills, one in 400 kills. And so 10% faster, 20% faster, 100% faster. At 100%, you really would probably be at one in 200 kills. It's not exactly clear how the modifiers work, so I can't actually speak to the actual numbers. What I can tell you is that going from 5% to 10% special item fine didn't seem to make a huge difference, but going from 5% to 60% special item fine made a world of difference. Things were just dropping. Retcon devices, fortune cards, costumes, uh, heroes back when heroes dropped. So special item find is important. If you are an ultimate pack player, you're probably not going to care so much about special item find. Uh, you're probably going to do what I'm going to do, which is build up to 600 splinters and throw those in the bank. And just wait. Let them sit there. And then all the other splinters I earn, I'll start buying hero ultimate upgrades uh, for 200 uh, credits or 200 splinters. Um, if you are a free-to-play player, you are going to want as much special item find as you can get on your costume. Wherever you can get it, go for it. There are two slots where you can get special item find and you can get a special item find on your costume core. So on the last two slots of any character's equipment, you can get special item find, you can get drop rarity boost, you can get plus XP, and you can get plus credits. 
Um, because this is going to be a farming guide, I'm going to go over everything. Um, so, basically, the more of a specific type, the more you're going to get of that specific type dropped. Um, I don't think it corresponds necessarily to the percentages listed. I don't think if you have 50% special item find, you're going to get 50% more splinters. I just think it's going to cut down on the chances. Usually chances in the game for really rare items, which splinters aren't, but costumes are, is like one in a million to get it from a drop. And then if you remember when I was reading this, it says bosses only drop special items the first time you defeat them each day. That's because bosses have a built-in code to give them an increased special item chance of dropping. Which is why characters with 0% special item find can actually get it. If they're just getting those drops at the flat rate coded into the game. I don't know the code. So again, you know, don't ask that. Just work on work with me in this way. If you have five percent, you got an increased chance. If you got a fifty percent chance uh, after a special item find, you got a hugely increased chance. So maybe it goes from one in a million to one in nine hundred million. That's a lot more of a chance than the last guy at one in a hundred million. And these numbers aren't there. It's just you know, how many costumes have you seen dropped? How many things have you killed? I've seen three costumes dropped, and I must have killed millions of things. So it's kind of working in there. And I've gotten five costumes from fortune cards as opposed to actually dropping in the game. Like, just the way it is. Fortune cards probably have a different chance of dropping a, a costume. Um... And that's really how special item find works, and it does adjust the rate that you find splinters. So if your sole goal is for splinters, stack as much special item find as you can. Moving on up, we're going to go to rare item find. Increases the chance to find artifacts and rare gear and weapons. This does include cosmics, and you do see a lot more the more drop rarity you have. Now by a lot, I mean going from once in a character's life to maybe three times in the character's life. And that would be at 50%. So, I mean, it's a, definitely an increase, but it's not going to be like this massive, okay, now Cosmics are going to drop like every 100 kills in Midtown. Just not going to happen. You could get that lucky. And that was what that would be, is luck. But you basically have to gear for what you want. As you can see in Spider-Man, I've gone for as much rare item I, as I could find, and I, I got a bonus of some special item find on another piece. Drop rarity, same thing, these two slots and a core can have it as of now. Um, I don't know the actual odds of getting it, but they're not high. Cosmics were meant to be like, oh wow, I found a cosmic, this is awesome. What I can't tell you, and what I have a feeling of, is the higher the drop rarity boost, the more likely you are to get gear for your character, as opposed to gear for other people's. It could be sheer coincidence that I've seen this, but obviously this is uh, around my 18th character that I've leveled to 30. I've got several in the 40s, and one at 50. And with all that game playing, with all the, the builds that I've done, I have found that the higher drop rarity I have, the more gear I get for myself as opposed to other people. Um, I really don't care, though, because I have all those other characters. But, you know, if Thor is going to be your main, you really want to get gear for Thor. And I do believe rare item kind of curves the curveball chance to uh, gain items of his own uh, use. Uh, same with Storm. She has 56 rare item finds, 60 rare item find, and she tends to find a lot of items for herself. You know, one night she found seven cosmics. Of the seven cosmics, six were for herself. One night on Thing, I found five cosmics at 45% uh, drop rarity, 
and only three uh, were usable by him. Two weren't. So it kind of scales. And those are memorable nights because that's a lot of cosmics. Um, the thing with rare item find that you got to take into consideration is going to be the sheer cost of um, gear. And I say this, I'm going to go over here, because if you look at gear underneath the crafter, I got my guy maxed finally. Thank you. We got a little golf clap. If you find a blue item at level one, it's only 300 credits to check it and see if what kind of purple it becomes. At 13 to 24, it's 600 credits. At 25 to 36, it's 3,000 credits. At 37 to 48, it's 30,000 credits. And at 49 to 60, it's a whopping 100,000 credits. Drop rarity, the higher level you are, is like adding plus 1,000 credits to your character find. It's just massive amounts of credits because if you find an epic and you can wear it, you just saved 100,000 if you got it blue. And the higher the drop rarity item, the more likely a white item will turn green, a green item will turn blue, a blue item will turn purple, and a purple item will turn cosmic. What happens is, is usually in these games, in these type of games, is there's a roll that's done to see what kind of gear. And from 1 to 99.90, is white. Uh, from 99.90 to 99.95 is green. You know, 9.95 to 97 is blue. 0.97 to 99 is purple. And that 0.1 is cosmic. Kind of think of it in those terms. So, you know, when you add 50% rare item find, you go from 0.01% chance to maybe a 0.02% chance. That's what you're kind of doing. Or in this case, that 50% would be 0 0.015. Um, so <clears throat> the increased chances of getting those purples is a lot of credits in your bank. Uh, you know, the increased chance of getting greens and blues helps max out all your crafters and your vendors. Uh, high ranks of vendors that do here, you can buy purples, which will save you a lot of credits too. Even if it's 100,000 credits for the purple, you don't have to use pure enhanced genome to check it. You don't have to find an item. You can actually see the stats on it and just buy it. It's kind of an important factor. Um, I doubt you can buy cosmics, but I suppose anything's possible. And now going to credits. Credits is really simple. It adds X amount of credits to your credit find. So if you're plus 10 credits, every time credits drop, you get 10 extra credits in that pile. Um, that adds up fast, because if you kill, say, 1,000 mobs in a day at 10 credits, that's 10,000 extra credits you would have gotten just for running around doing the same thing. Um, so that does pay off. If you can get it, you, you should get it. Uh, but I'm going to gear this kind of towards more of the free-to-players. Uh, free-to-players, you're going to want to stack special item find. Any extra drop rarity you can get with that special item find, you're going to want to take. And then if you can get credits, then take credits. Uh, it's, you know, just the way it is. Um, if you're ultimate pack finder, you'll probably want a little bit. You, you already have 5% special item find. Or if you don't want characters at all, I still recommend just keeping a little bit special item find. Keep those splinters coming in. You can stack them up. There may be a character you want later. They may do something with them later that you're going to want to do and go, oh my god, I just spent four months not really farming for splinters and taking that into consideration, and all of a sudden I need splinters. You, you don't want that to happen. Um, so what I kind of do with my gearing is these two slots I try to go with my primary type of drop rarity or I'll put one drop rarity one special item find and do my core drop rarity or if I get a really good core with special item find I'll put the special item find on the costume and go for drop rarity off of the um, equipment 
however I can do it. That gives me a little bit. Um, you know, I should be somewhere really between 10 and 20 percent of my special item find and anywhere from 30 to 40 percent or more drop rarity boost keeps my drop rarities coming in but I still have a collection of splinters coming through if I ever get to a point where I feel I just have way too many splinters I can change that um, so drop rarity is really like finding a lot of money in one big pile when it works bonus XP does what it does it gives you plus XP it's not a percentage on that it's just XP so if it's plus 20 XP when you kill a mob if you kill a thousand mobs that's 20,000 extra XP you got it's free it's one of those cake things take it if you got it but if you don't oh well um, and that's really it for how those uh, item finds and uh, farming boosters work going over here there's many, many different ways of farming. So when people are looking for a lot of coins before Midtown came out, running low-level red terminals solo at a high level and just speed clearing the whole place and taking all the credits because of the high credit drop rates, you know, people were reporting 70,000 credits an hour farm. Not terrible. And that's not including the selling back and forth. They would actually skip picking up items unless they were blue or purple. And uh, just try to speed, speed clear and pick up uh, all the credits they can and kill with movement abilities and keep their movement speed going. That is an option. That's going to be terrible loot because obviously you're going to be getting way too low level of items. Um, now with Midtowns out, you could farm Midtowns. The difference here being is, as you can see, on a red terminal, I can pick what level I go at. On a purple terminal, where the Midtown is, you're going to be stuck between a level range. This will probably be ideal for farming loot and credits. A lot of credits do drop in Midtown. This is also a great place to go get splinters, because you're always killing, and it's a massive amount of killing. Splinters are based on per kill. You got a chance per kill. You could hit a streak and find a hundred in a row and then never find one again. I mean, it's just, it's possible. It's very, 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 very unlikely, but you can do it. So the more killing you're actually doing for splinters, the more splinters you're going to find. Um, and that leads you to the choices. You could do green terminals, wicked easy hoods, and just run them, you know, two minutes back and forth. That would be kind of mundane, but uh, you could do it. You could do reds. There's a lot of mobs in there. Um, you could group together and do some blue challenges. Again, those challenges are going to restrict you. If you're looking for just splinters, you're going to be looking for the easiest kill possible. If you're looking for loot, you're going to look for the hardest kills possible. Plain and simple. You'll probably find loot that you have to grow into. But hey, that's okay. You get a cosmic that's a couple levels higher than you. Gives you something to look forward to. Um, so for loot, I am going to recommend Midtown. For money, I am going to recommend Midtown. The Midtown is just the best combination of the two. For XP, group reds are probably the best at level. And you just keep them at your level. You're going to want a full group and probably a Cyclops in it. If you can't do reds, you can do Midtown again for XP. So Midtown is now covering XP, loot, and coins. Um, very good choice. When you get into a midtown, join a group. If someone invites you to a group, join it. If no one's inviting you to a group, start inviting people to your group. Get people in your group. Maximize the group. You get more XP. It's just a benefit for you. There is no reason to run around solo in a midtown. It's just stupid. You're losing out. Um, especially if you can get a Cyclops to join you because you get his XP bonuses. You get all the other benefits of being in a group. Group. <laughs> Stop being silly and group. Um, and that's really about it. I recommend doing your uh, Cube Shard dailies, at least on the green terminal level. Uh, you can skip Doom, that will save you about 15-20 minutes maybe. Um, but you can do them all other than Doom in about 20 minutes or so. 
Uh, you can skip, like I said, Doom, and you can skip Aim if you want. Those are really long. Hydra can be long, but it doesn't tend to be that long. It, it can be found pretty quick. Uh, if you have burst speed, you can just run them, and you'll get each terminal done in less than five minutes, probably. If you have flight that you can just fly over everything and ignore mobs, you can absolutely just ignore all the mobs on the way to kill the bosses. But each boss has a bonus loot table. It has an extra chance to drop splinters. It has a chance to drop the 10-pack splinters. It has a chance to drop costumes, it has a chance to drop cores, artifacts, cosmics, all that's increased. More money, more XP, and you get the cube shard, and after 10 cube shards you buy your fortune card, and that's a free fortune card, and well let's look at what fortune cards have. If we're looking at farming, getting these fortune cards is ideal. Um, uh, it, you can get Deadpool's on mass costume, Iron Man stealth costume, Thor destroyer, uh, Captain America's the Captain, Wolverine's Day of the Future Past, and Iron Buddy, Old Laced, Herbie, uh, Portal to Confident Bovine Sector uh, Recipe. Uh, those are the rares. And Commons, direct decorative artifacts. You know, if you want blue mist, uh, lightning aura underneath you, orbs around you, head on fire, that's going to be decorative artifacts. Uh, retcon devices, matrix of bindings, those are going to come in handy later. You're going to need those for high-end crafting recipes. Uh, commons are going to be the experience boost and rarity boosts. You know, if you get two hours of 50% rarity boost for doing 20 minutes, 30 minutes of green terminals, one, or I'll, we'll say five times a week, that's 10 hours at plus 50% drop rarity. That's a lot of extra credits coming through because you can pick up those greens, you can pick up those blues, and just sell them. Even if they're useless, you sell them to the vendor. They're worth more money. The higher the quality level, the more money they're worth. You know, you get a backlog of artifacts, you can sell those too. They're worth a fortune. They'll push your uh, crafter's experience level, your vendor's experience level. So basically, to sum it up, Midtown is your best bet for farming anything at this time. Unless you just really want credits and you want them fast and splinters, you can do low-level reds, low-level greens, and speed run them boringly as much as possible. So that's going to be my uh, Farming 101 video guide. It went a little longer than I thought. It, it gets pretty involved. I don't know, like I said, all the complications of the computations. However, I can tell you more is better. If you want rare items like artifacts and cosmics, get drop rarity. If you want splinters, you have to go for special item find. It's just the way it is. It's a free-to-play game. It gives you the options of what you want to do. You want to be more powerful high-end, or do you want a lot of characters? And then go for the more powerful high-end. Up to you. So. I hope it helped. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I shall talk to you all later.